Hello everyone, David here. I recently bought a new monitor, this lovely KTC G32P5, and it's great, but I realized I actually missed a feature from my old monitor, Philips Ambilight. It's a system of LED lights on the back of the monitor that lights up the surroundings with ambient lighting that reflects what's on the monitor, hence the name. It gives you the feeling that the picture is somehow bigger than the screen. A very cool idea. Um, when you've got the lights off, and you're gaming in HDR with some inky OLED blacks and bright flicks of neon, it can really add to the experience. You can also make the lights a fixed color or a rainbow pattern or something, but why would you do that? Now, this monitor doesn't have Ambilight built in, but it is possible to add the feature the manual way by buying some LED strip lights, sticking them to the back of the monitor and using a tool that runs in the background to capture the screen and control the lights. I wasn't sure if this kind of thing would be as good as Ambilight, but I did figure it would be better than nothing. A quick look through AliExpress and I found this set for £20, which includes the controller, set of three lights and software ready to go. If you want to go manual, you can buy all these parts separately, but it starts getting complicated, so if you want a simple kit, I recommend this one by Sky Demo. You'll want the set made for your specific monitor size. Uh, I'm going to stick the stickers onto the plastic clips like that and then stick the clips onto the back of the monitor and according to the manual with its tiny tiny picture um, it recommends you have three clips along the top and then I think two down each side. Cool I've got a nice XTC logo here in the middle as well so that should help me line it up. Let's get some stickers on. So even though I know this is going on the back of my monitor I still need it to be perfectly lined up. Does it look straight to you? It's actually pretty easy to get started. First of all, find a spare USB port. In my case, my monitor acts as a kind of USB hub, either through a separate upstream connection that goes to my PC, or to any connected USB-C video input, like my laptop. So I daisy change from one of its USB-A ports to avoid extra cables snaking around my desk. Down at the back here, I've actually got it plugged into the monitor itself, which means I'll have a little bit of extra USB cable that I want to just secure. So I'll probably, uh, maybe not there, maybe on the, on the back part as well, but I'll just want to keep the USB cables out of the way. Then you can go to the SkyDemo website and install their software. Despite the first pop-up being only in Chinese, you can get it running pretty quickly, in English fortunately, and it seems to do the job. Or so I thought. It's a little too keen to update. It obviously reads the colour from the display, but updates the LEDs too quickly. If you're gaming and the camera is panning past the environment, you'll see it flicker different colours, and it's actually distracting and not at all ambient like that. Frustratingly, the software does have an advanced set of options, but nothing for controlling smoothing or interpolation. So I had a look around for an alternative. And this is where GitHub really shines. There's a fantastic open source tool called Hyper HDR. It's completely free, highly customizable, and works with all sorts of LED setups, including the SkyDemo kit. Once you've installed it, head to LED Hardware, LED Setup. Here you'll need to tell it how many lights are in each strip and where the first LED starts. For my setup, that's 37 along the top, 20 on each side, and an input position of 57. Big thanks to Reddit user Juhax for sharing his configuration. I just copied it and it worked immediately. Next, check your LED controller settings. Mine worked right away, but you might want to make sure it's using the correct USB port. Alternatively, the auto mode seems to work pretty well, so if you're unsure what to put here, just leave it on that option. Finally, under video capture, disable USB capture and enable screen capture. By default, HyperHDR seems to assume it's running on something like a Raspberry Pi or another external device, not directly on your gaming PC. So this change just makes sure it's capturing from your monitor properly. Here we go. All right. Well, it's nice and bright. Let's see. Um, let me give you some test colors. To, uh... Oh yeah, no, that's going red. Maybe if you bring the camera around this way, you can see 
like the uh, position of the red at the edge matches the lighting. So that's pretty cool. That's what I want. Yeah. Awesome. And my word, this fixes everything. The smoothing is perfect with Hyper HDR, and it shows off the power of this lighting strip really nicely. I'm quite fortunate in that I can place my monitor against a white wall, which shows off all the colors very effectively. I noticed one small issue, which is when I'm recording gameplay with the Nvidia overlay, it can cause the LED lights to cut out sometimes. I think it's because they both capture the screen using the same method and they can interfere with each other. It's only an issue if you're actively recording though. The rest of the time, it's fine. Also, there is a downside to powering the lights directly from the monitor. When I bring the computer out of sleep, the monitor isn't on, so it often can't find the lighting connection and they don't power on until I restart Hyper HDR manually. It's not super annoying, but I would prefer this to work without any intervention. So maybe I'll hook it up directly to the PC if it continues to annoy me. Also, the LED strips do suck down a bit of power. If I try to blast them out with full white color, presumably the most power-hungry configuration, then they will disconnect and restart. It's not a problem during gameplay because you don't usually have a completely white screen on for long, but it does seem like it can't always get enough power from the monitor, which would be solved with a direct connection. Alternatively, just reducing the brightness from 100%, which is the default, to something like 85 is enough to prevent it trying to draw too much power when you get a full white screen. You might run into this problem if you try and use them through a passive USB hub as well, so watch out for that. Yeah, the uh, light strips are all stuck down as I planned and just got one of the little hooks to keep the USB adapter sort of securely away so that I don't see any of the cables while I'm actually looking at the monitor. And um, they're really nice and bright and the colors they give off are beautiful as well. Come around this side and uh, have a look. And then as I swing the camera around, you can see it really gets illuminated by the, the bright colors back there. You can really feel the, the light shifting from one side to the other as it goes across the screen. Pretty cool. I really like the effect, even just when I'm in the Windows desktop. It gives a kind of pleasant vibe when I'm doing something productive. But in games is where it really shines, literally and figuratively. With a decent HDR monitor, the lights off, an immersive game, and a cup of tea of course, it brings the world of the game into a wider view. I'd say it's a different thing from smart glasses or VR headsets, which are also immersive and cool. But this is a better alternative if you want to be more grounded in the real world and stick with a monitor. Old school, but new. What do you think? Do you like this kind of effect? Is it worth £20 and some time out of your day to set it up? I'm enjoying it and I see myself using it in the future. Maybe not every day, but some days when I really want to game in style. Okay, I hope this video was useful. Like and subscribe for more. See you next time.